So today's lesson is on momentum and I'll be recording today's lesson. So if you have something that you don't want to say um, or if you wanna talk and you don't want your voice to be recorded, then please send me a chat. But today's mass, uh, lesson is on linear momentum and force. And linear momentum is defined as a product system's mass multiplied by its velocity. So the symbol for momentum is a P. I'm not quite sure why, but that is it. And it's a product of mass times velocity. Uh, this is just a concept. So we talked about inertia and inertia was the ability to change um, the state of an object. So this is essentially inertia, uh, yeah, excuse me, inertia in motion. So when you are moving, you have inertia and it takes a force to stop you. So in this sense that inertia in motion is known as linear momentum. If you wanna change the momentum, uh, it's just delta P, and this is written down here at the bottom, is M delta V. So delta P is, or we could say, um, P2 or P minus P naught. I guess that's the terminology you've been using so far. Equals M times V minus V naught. So that's your change in momentum. And the units for momentum are kilogram meter per second. So we'll just jump into some problems. The first one says, find the magnitude and linear momentum of 7.1 kilogram bowling ball traveling at 12 meters per second. So the mass is 7.1 kilograms. The velocity is 12 meters per second. So P equals MV. P equals 7.1 times 12. Eighty-five point two kilogram meters per second. That's the momentum of the bowling ball. And then for the car, it's a little bit different, right? The car has um, the velocity now is in the mass is twelve hundred kilograms, and the velocity is ninety kilometers per hour. So we have to convert that into meters per second. And that's 25 meters per second. Um, and now we have um, the velocity and the mass. So we can do that again, P equals MV, P equals 1200 times 25. Uh, 30,000 kilogram meter per second. So we always have to write out kilogram meters per second. It's not like a Newton where it's abbreviated. Um, so that's something we need to get used to. All right, give this one a try. What, you have a question? Yeah, so I just get this straight. I just write like kilo, kg m over s and that would be kilograms per second squared, right? No, it's kilogram meters per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just write like that and like, do I have to put that dot in between? Times? No, I was just writing that out for you so you could see, right? It's kilograms times meters. Okay, got it. All right, you guys try this one.
All right, so for the first one, we have uh, the mass is 110. We call it M1 and V1 is eight. So P1 is M1, V1, P1 equals 110 times eight, 880 kilogram meters per second. And then M2 is 0 0.41 kilograms. V2 is 25 meters per second. So P2 equals M2 V2. 0 0.41 times 25. 10.25 kilogram meters per second. So if you wanted to compare them, you could say that what it's like 88 times bigger the runner than the football being thrown. So does anybody have any questions on that one? Pretty straightforward, I think. All right, now this one's kind of challenging. It says at a basketball game, 120 pound cheerleader is tossed vertically upward with a speed of four and a half meters per second by a male cheerleader. What is the cheerleader's change in momentum from the time she's released to just before being caught if she is caught at a height at which she was released. So what's happening is here is this cheerleader is getting thrown up in the air, coming back down to the exact same point. Um, the initial speed over here, V naught is 4.5 meters per second. And if they're caught or she is caught at the same height, the final velocity would be negative 4.5 meters per second. So remember, gravity is going to act on it the same. So the velocity that it lands with is the same velocity that it takes off with. So what we want to do is our goal is to find the change in momentum. Right? It says, uh, what's the cheerleader's change in momentum? So delta P equals M delta V. Now we don't have the mass, we have the weight, 120 pounds. So we need to convert it from pounds into kilograms. So there are 2.2 .2 pounds in a kilogram. So we have 54.55 .5 kilograms. That's our mass. So then we just plug it in. Delta P equals 54.55 times negative 4.5 minus 4.5, negative 490.91 kilogram meters per second. Now in part B, in part B it's asking, what is the change in momentum if she falls an additional 0.3 meters? What's the change in momentum? So that gives us a new final velocity. We'll just call it V2 here. That magnitude, that velocity has gotta be bigger than the 4.5. So to find this velocity, we have to use our kinematic equation. V squared equals V naught squared plus two G Y minus Y naught. V squared equals negative 4.5 squared plus two times 9.8 times 0 0.3. V squared equals Twenty six point one three V equals the square root of that five point one one meters per second. And you got to remember that it's negative, it's going downward. So now we found V two, right? We called that V two. And now we can find our change in momentum again. 
delta p equals m delta v. So we're still going with our original velocity of 4.5. Delta p equals 54.55 times, oops, negative 5.11 minus 4.5. It's not a huge difference than before. Five hundred twenty-four point two three, negative. So that's our second change in velocity for part B. Does anybody have anything they need clarified there? All right, you guys try this one, number four. All right, this one's not so bad. So the mass is 1.2 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. The velocity is 10 meters per second. One point two times ten to the fifth kilogram meters per second. So now, if we want to find out what speed a trash can would be moving with the same momentum, now we would do p equals mv, v equals p over m. And the trash can is eight. Fifteen thousand meters per second. So you can see the mass is a big player here. It's a pretty fast moving trash can. Anybody have any questions on that one? All right, so this brings us to our next equation, right? P uh, equals MV, sorry. that's our, you have a question? So wait, um, uh, could you go back real quick? I was kind of cur curious uh, what you used to divide the eight kilograms. Was it the uh, uh, the kilogram mass per second or was it the mass from uh, A? I don't know, well, let me get back, hold on. Right here? Ah, I got gotcha. you, thank you. You good? Yeah. All right, cool. My computer's acting crazy. All right, so now we're back on this page. Remember our formula, P equals MV. So remember acceleration was change in velocity over time. So if we use the formula delta P equals M delta V, 
and substitute in delta V equals AT, we can see delta P equals MAT. And if we remember that F equals MA, we say delta P equals FT or FT equals delta P. This is called the impulse. This is the impulse momentum theorem. This quantity here is known as impulse. And the units are a Newton second. So when you're asked for an impulse, that's force times time. That's both of them together as your impulse. So it takes a force over a period of time to change your momentum. So if you're in your car and a force is being applied for a period of time, right? Your velocity is increasing, your momentum is changing. That's what the theory is here. That should make sense to you. Likewise, in the opposite direction, if you're decreasing your velocity, it's gotta be a negative force over a period of time for a decreased momentum. So let's take a look at this. Oh, I got it all written up. A loaded tractor trailer with a mass of 5,000 kilograms traveling at three kilometers per hour hits a loading dock and comes to a stop in 0.64 seconds. What's the magnitude of the average force exerted on the truck by the dock? So we have a mass of 5,000 kilograms, an initial velocity of three kilometers per hour, a final velocity of zero and a time of 0 0.64 seconds. And we're looking for the average force. So first thing we have to know, we notice we have to change from kilometers per hour to meters per second. So 1,000 kilometers. Oh, that's not the right conversion. One kilometer has 1,000 meters in it. And one hour has 3,600 seconds. So we take 3,000 divide by 3,600 and we get 0 0.83 meters per second. Our goal is to find the force, Ft equals m delta v, that's our formula. F equals m delta v over t, F equals 5,000 times zero minus 0 0.83 over 0 0.64. Sixty five hundred ten point four two Newtons. Anybody need anything clarified there? Uh, yeah, I got six thousand four hundred eighty four. I'm going to put it in wrong. I, oh, because I used 0.83333. I just left a number in my calculator. Oh, oh, I gotcha. Yeah, 6484 if you just do 0.83. All right. Sorry. I used 3333333. I just carried the carried over the answer. Anybody else? All right, you guys try this one.
Remember, two milliseconds is two times 10 to the minus third seconds. So for this one, we have a mass of 0 0.03 kilograms. The initial velocity is zero. Final velocity is 600 meters per second. The time is two times 10 to the minus third seconds. And we're looking for the force. Nine hundred? Is it nine hundred newtons? Don't you guys got? I, I got nine thousand. Nine thousand newtons. Yeah, nine thousand newtons. Nine thousand newtons. Any questions there? I know these aren't that hard. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, here we got it. We're going backwards with it. Here we're given the momentum. So delta P equals three times 10 to the fourth kilogram meter per second. Time is five seconds. And we're looking for F. FT equals delta P. So 0 0.6 thousand newtons. And this is going to be stopping it. So it's actually a negative momentum change. But it's just asking for the magnitude anyway. You don't need the direction. Momentum, by the way, is a vector. I failed to mention that in the beginning. Um, so it does have a direction associated with it. Any questions there? Now, this one's kind of tricky. It says when bunting, a baseball player uses the bat to change both the speed and direction of the baseball. The baseball has a mass of 0.16 kilograms. The speed before and after the bunt are 15 meters per second and 10 meters respective, respectively. The bunt lasts 0 0.025 seconds. What's the change in momentum of the baseball? What's the average force of the baseball and the bat? So, right, if you don't know anything about baseball, bunt, the ball comes in, hits the bat, and goes back out. So on its way in, V naught is 15 meters per second. On its way out, it's 10 meters per second. But notice the direction. The direction is negative. So when we go to get the momentum change, delta P equals 0 0.16 times negative 10 minus 15. four kilogram meter per second. Negative four, it's negative. And then in part B, it says, what's the, what's the force? So FT equals delta P, F equals negative four divided by 0 0.025.
160 newtons, negative. Any questions there? Anything you need clarified? Oh, the force says negative, right? Yep, the force is definitely negative. Okay. Right, the force would be in this direction. All right, you guys try this one. All right, so let's try this one. Here we're given the force, 1,000 newtons and the time, 0 0.150. And we're looking for the impulse in part A. So that's FT. Hundred and fifty newton seconds. Then in part B it says, "What is the opponent's final velocity if his mass is one hundred and five kilograms?" Right? And v naught is zero. So for part B, F T equals m v minus v naught. V equals F T over m. One fifty divided by one hundred five. One point four three meters per second, and then in part C it says, if his head is ten kilograms, what's the speed? So we can use the same equation and get one fifty divided by ten, fifteen meters per second, in part C. How'd we do on that? Um, pretty good. Just my uh, calculator messed up on uh, uh, the calculator's the, fault. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, when I put it in, it said point zero one meters per second. Mm. Yeah. So I must have put something wrong or something. All right, you got one more chance to get it right. One more problem, and then we'll do our. Here you go. Give this a try.
All right, let's give this one a try. So during the French Open, Venus Williams is the fastest serve recorded, 58 meters per second. Um, that'd be the velocity. The initial velocity is zero when it gets hit originally. We're looking for the force. The tennis racket mass, 0 0.057 kilograms. And the impact time is five times 10 to the minus third seconds. So Ft equals m v minus v naught. F equals 0 0.057 times 58 divided by five times 10 to the minus third. Six hundred and sixty one point two newtons. Any questions there? All right, here is the quiz. Oops, where'd it go? There's the quiz. I'll give you a minute and then I'll go over and shut down the Zoom.